This is the plaintiff, Hilal Jalal. He says he told his neighbor, the defendant, about a large tree hanging over his property. The guy did nothing about it, and sure enough, it fell on his fence, damaging it. Neighbor or no neighbor, he's owed 450 bucks due to his negligence, and is suing for just that today. This is the defendant, Vikram Sharma. He says his tree fell due to a hurricane, and yes, one of his trees fell on his neighbor's fence. He can't prevent trees from falling in hurricanes, so he owes nothing. He's accused of ignoring a neighbor. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket. The plaintiff says he warned his neighbor about his tree, and sure enough, the tree fell and damaged his fence. But the defendant says there was a hurricane for crying out loud, and he can't prevent trees from falling in hurricanes. It's the case of, well, that's the way the wind blows. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Mr. Jalal, what happened here? Yes, Judge. Uh, on November 2nd, a big branch about 40 to 50 feet long fell on our fence and uh, broke the fence in half. And uh, did it get hit? Did the tree get hit by lightning or something? How did that happen? How did the branch fall? Judge, it could be a wind gust. It's not a hurricane. There was no hurricane in that area on that day, but it got carried away in the wind. And uh, okay. by maybe 10, 20 feet, it came and uh, hit my fence. Well, let me ask you a question. How mm. much of the tree was hanging over your property? Judge, there is another property sandwiched between the two properties. So the branch extends over the neighbors and then on yours? Are you all next to each other? It doesn't extend into my property. It was extending the neighbor's property. So the wind took the, br so the branch wasn't even growing over your property. The branch was growing over the neighbor's property and then the wind took it to your property? Yes, yes, partially to my property. Had yes. you ever uh, talked to him about the tree growing out of control? Yes, both of us, myself and uh, the neighbor in between. We, we gave him a warning in the month of October. And told him you need to uh, cut this tree. And what did he say? No? He just heard it and said nothing and did nothing. All right. So now let me hear from you, Mr. Sharma. Uh, good evening, Your Honor. So, <laughs> uh, well, whenever these kind of things happen, the first thing you do is call insurance, right? That's why we usually have insurance. So I called my insurance and they told me that uh, it's, it was a hurricane. Uh, the wind gusts are 35 miles per hour. I've actually submitted the um, uh, you know, the evidence. So, <laughs> so I, I don't think it's a hurricane until it's 40 miles an hour, so it might have been a tropical storm. Right. I stand corrected. Yeah, that makes more sense. Okay. So now, uh, my neighbor, next door neighbor, Mona, the property on whose the tree actually fell, the branch actually fell on their property, not on Mr. Jalal's. A section of that branch actually broke the fence between my next door neighbor and Mr. Jalal. So now Mona came back to me, said, hey, I called my insurance. It's a wind damage. My insurance does not cover wind damage. I was like, I felt bad. So I actually said, all right, you know what? I'll get the branch lifted. So I called my tree guy and I've already submitted the receipt. And I had them come over two days later, which was November 5th. And I had the branch picked up. Right. So I did that, even though my insurance company and my lawyer said the tree laws in New Jersey clearly state you're not responsible. But these guys, I mean, I'm friends with them, so I didn't want to you know, cause that kind of trouble. I don't know Mr. Jalal. I've never spoken to Mr. Jalal. The only time I spoke to Mr. Jalal was the day I moved in. Right. And the day I moved in, he told me that he had called the cops on my immediate next door neighbor. The neighbor that he is now saying actually spoke to me about the branch. So I reached out to my neighbor and said, hey, did we ever speak about the branch? He said, I can actually you know, testify. We never spoke about the, about the branch and neither did I ever speak to Mr. Jalal about the fence. So now the thing is, I actually took care of the fence and then I get a notice, on, which was actually, by the way, uh, Your Honor, uh, you know, the notice that they sent the civil court was on December 7th and it had three complaints. One, they wanted the branch removed and they were asking me for $500 for that branch removed, which, by the way, I had already cleared a month back on November 5th. So they lied about that. Second, they said, my, friend, my fence is broken. I need $500 for it, which, by the way, you still don't know whether you own or not, right? My immediate next door neighbor, 
Miss Mona, she actually has already offered you to split the cost. You have still not gotten back to them. They are right next door. We can call them, right? And the third thing is, what was is it you actually, split the cost with Mona on? Uh, yeah, I split the cost with Mona for the tree branch. So the tree branch oh, guy okay. took two fifty dollars to remove it. So I paid one twenty five, and she okay. paid one twenty five. Even though I didn't have to, but anyways, I'm a nice guy. So now they actually distributed pamphlets in the neighborhood, Your Honor, stating that I am a very careless guy. I haven't actually owned up to the branch. Uh, and you know, I'm a bitch. I had already removed, by the way, but I ignored it. I don't like conflicts, so I'm, I'm still, I'm still Mr. Wait, 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 not... wait! Back it up, back yeah. it up. Tell me, he, they, yeah. they distributed pamphlets around the neighborhood. Yes, yes, they did. Yes, like, they like did. in people's mailboxes or what? Yes, yes, they did. Yes, they did. How exactly. do you know? That's exactly what they did. So my next door neighbor actually called and laughed to me about that as well. By the way, FYI. So anyways, so that's the thing because I, all my neighbors get along with me. These are the only guys I don't speak to because they call cops on people. So I'm kind of scared on them. And the last thing, legal fee of $500. <laughs> For what? I mean, you have gone to people. You went to civil court. There was no lawyer signature. You went to people's court. I don't know if you've hired a lawyer. You're here sitting on your own. I, I know these are hard times, but this is no way. I know we're all frustrated. We're so, all stuck at home. Mr. I'm sorry. Jalal, yeah. did you hear what yes. Mr. Sharma said? Do you have uh, any so, proof that you paid $200 in legal fees? Uh, I can uh, produce proof. I have the name of the No, no, address. now is, this is the trial. We're at the trial right now. Show me the proof right now. I didn't pay him already, uh, Judge, okay. but I have to pay him. Okay. Listen up, Mr. Jalal. Let me tell you how tree law works, mm. okay? It's real simple. He is not God. He did not create the gale force winds. He did not create the tropical storm. He did not create the wind that night. Your neighbor who's in between has the right, any neighbor, let me just say this for anybody, any, any person, if my neighbor's tree is growing over my property, I cannot ask my neighbor to trim the branches that are over my property. I own from the hells to the heavens. So if his tree is growing over my property, I have the right without asking his permission and without the right to demand his reimbursement to take a chainsaw and go and get that tree branch out from my way. But I don't have the right to sue him for what it costs me and I don't have the obligation to ask him for permission. And there are hurricane force or tropical force winds or any winds or lightning, that is called an act of God. That is not anything that Mr. Sharma did. So you cannot sue him for God's actions. He has zero responsibility to sue you. And if your lawyer, if you really did go to a lawyer, didn't tell you that, don't pay your lawyer. Because this isn't even subject to dispute. This is 100% black letter law, okay? That is why his insurance company wouldn't pay it, and that is why he is not paying it. My verdict in this case is for the defendant. Judge? Thank you, Your Honor. So the judge finds for the defendant in this case. Mr. Jalal, let me ask you, how do you feel about the judge's decision? That's okay. That is, I, uh, the judge makes a judgment. It is okay. I don't want to comment about that. But Mr. Sharma made some statements which were not true. The removal of the tree branch was not done by Mr. Sharma. It was done by the occupant sandwiched between our two properties. She paid the money and Mr. Sharma on January 8th went and paid her money cash. She stuffed some money in her hand just forcibly. Well, it's all right for you to spell that out to us, but the bottom line is you sued him, and really in court you have no position to sue. You can't win on a case like this. The judge was very okay, specific sir. in I... explaining that. I'm sorry about that, Mr. Jalal. Mr. Sharma, let me ask you, are you surprised by the decision, or you, were you pretty sure this is the way it was going to end? No, sir. I mean, I, I was surprised at all. And stuffing money in somebody's hand is actually a criminal activity. I, I, I don't know, Jalal, Mr. Jalal, you do it, but people in New Jersey are not allowed to do that by force. And I wouldn't forcefully give money to anyone. I, I earned my money hard. And secondly, I actually have receipt of when it was actually done. You have no receipts. You have no proof. And you're actually talking for a neighbor who's my friend and who you actually call the cops on. They hate you. I'm going to use that strong word. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm friends with them. So anyways, I'm sorry. I don't want to waste your time. I know you're busy. So. Okay. Well, listen, you won the case and that's all. You should be satisfied with that. Exactly. All right. Thank that's you. it. That'll wrap up the case. Let's see what the judges have to say about this now. Let's join them for another edition of After the Verdict. This case came to you from New Jersey and the common law rule in New Jersey, just like in Florida and probably in every other state, is that when, unless a tree is dead, damaged, or diseased, and you have reason to know it, you're not gonna be liable if a limb falls on your neighbor's right. car, house, wife, whatever it might be, <laughs> all right? I mean, whatever horrible thing you can think of. Right. And I think the rule rubs a lot of people the wrong way. You know, yeah. generally speaking, they're like, well, well, what do you mean? His tree fell it's on your my tree. fence. It's what you your mean? tree. It's your tree. It fell on my car. My car whatever right. it might that be. happens a lot. Yeah, but you're out of luck. Right. This is a classic act of God under all these policies or a not covered thing. They get out that big stamp that says not covered. They right. slam it onto your, <laughs> onto your claim and, and that's it. You walk right. out the door. Right. So tough break. So Donna wants to know this. Hey, Harvey, uh, is it legal for my landlord to keep my security deposit for repairs and then not do the repairs? So I'm assuming you moved out and you damaged something. Well, here's the deal. He's entitled to the money. He is not required to fix the problem, but he's entitled to the money.